Today I'm reviewing this magnifying lamp, 24 watt LED light, has a 10x magnifier on it. I'm excited by this guy because I have a light over my painting table, but I don't have a magnifier, and the light I have only kind of covers one side, so by putting one on the other side, I can cover both sides. I was sent this by Amazon Vine program to review for free. They have no editorial control over what I say, but I did receive it for free for review purposes. It comes with this quite substantial base that you can mount it into. I am going to be primarily using it with the clamp iron accessory that it also comes with. Alright, and right away I run into my first question about specifications. It says it's a 24 watt LED light. The power adapter that came with it, however, outputs 12 volts DC at 1.5 amp. 1.5 amps times 12 volts is 18 watts maximum output on this guy. So either it's pulling more than it should be out of this guy, or it's not really a 24 watt LED. Alright, this base feels very heavy. It only weighs 5 pounds, 1.9 ounces, but that's a pretty hefty 5 pound because it's quite dense. Um, the light itself is pretty light, so I do not expect this base to have any problem keeping this lamp upright. So if you're using the base, there is a hole here that will line up to this screw, and you're going to have to screw that screw in quite a bit to get it to go all the way into the hole. But you have to back it out first to get this guy in there. Now with this screw screwed into that hole, there's no rotation to speak of. I mean, there's a little slop in the screw hole there, but you really can't rotate this much at all. So you can extend it out, up and down, along this line, but you only rotate it by rotating the base. And maybe that's fine, you can just rotate the base if you want to get it in a different position. Um, but you'd have to take that screw out to rotate this in that post any farther than the 3 or 4 degrees that the, the opening in the hole allows. So I've taken the screw out. It has a you know cheap feeling plastic big hand thing over. It looks like just a standard socket head cap screw with this thing snaps on the top. Um, you know, perfectly suitable for keeping that thing in place. Um, without it in there, I can rotate it around 360. Um, I extend this thing too far off the wrong side, it will fall over. So you know that's the danger of having that screw off is that you know if you get this extended too far, it'll start flipping over. Five pounds isn't enough for that. As long as you keep it generally in this direction here, you're fine. Um, so that screw is kind of a, a safety feature to keep it from accidentally flipping around and then getting too far extended and falling over. But I don't think it's going to fall out or pop out other than if you out, out, you know, overbalance it. Um, you can see here there's the AC adapter nameplate. You get farther away it enhances the size. There is some aberrations here. You know, as you get near the edge it kind of gets warped a little bit so the best view is in the center. Um, and there is a little bit of chromatic aberration. You can see colors and rainbows a little bit on it. Um, I'll have to evaluate this once the light is turned on with some painting to see if that's going to be an issue or not. But obviously, you know, this is not the most expensive magnifying glass you can buy. So this model was advertised as having the upgraded switch, and it has basically two knobs that turn. Um, they don't have a click, so there's no full click off. It just, they feel like they're potentiometers that turn from left to right. And under here, you have LEDs, and some of them are warm white, and some of them are cool white, and the two knobs appear to be two completely separate circuits for turning those on and off. So you can have both of them turned all the way on, or vary somewhere between the two. So here's an example. Uh, I turned on here the um, warm white LEDs and then turned them off. And then here are the cool white LEDs. And you can turn them both on to get as much light as it puts out, which is a reasonable amount of light here. I'm measuring the actual watt draw here. I've turned on the cool white LEDs and this is up to 13 watts. I'm going to turn on the warm white LEDs. And it's still at 14 watts. So here I have one set turned on just a little bit. And so it's 2 watts and I can turn it up brighter. And it goes up with the watt draw there. 
So if you only have one set of lights turned on, you can turn it down to a super dim amount. Um, and at this super dim amount, it's, you know, 1.72 watts, you know, so this is the pretty dim amount. Um, and then if you turn the other sets of lights on, it looks like whichever switch is at the maximum is basically saying the total amount of current drawn. There's a slight more, so maximum with half the lights is about 13.8, and you turn on the other set, it goes up to about 14, but you're really not saving any power by leaving half these lights turned off. So if you want to do maximum 14 watts, just turn them both on. So I suspect what's happening there is it's, you know, current limited, and when you turn on another set of LEDs, it just reduces the voltage just slightly, so the LEDs share the current across all of them. Now looking at the clamp, the screw that goes into the clamp is a lot bigger around than the screw that's in the base. You can see here, you know, the, the base screw here is, is pretty tiny compared to that screw there. All right, I've tightened this guy finger tight. You can still rotate it. There's some friction against that. I can pull on it and it won't come off unless I'm also rotating while I'm pulling on it. So it's, it's holding on there pretty well. Now, the clamp has a protective foam on the top of your table, but the bottom of your table is going to be hitting this metal here. And so if you care about not leaving metal divots in the bottom of your table, you might need to add a piece of foam tape or a furniture foot or felt or something underneath here just to protect your table. You know, a lot of people don't care about the bottom edge of their table, but it would have been a nice touch to have, you know, a piece of sticky felt already installed on that. Luckily for me, this nice piece of foam came in the packaging, so I'm just going to use that. So this is my current painting table. It's four feet wide. I've been using this lamp over here. It's a floor lamp, um, and it has modes where you can do bright white, cool white, but you can't like mix and match. And I've been working over on this side because it reaches about that far. This light over here also has that kind of reach issue of, you know, that's about as far over as it goes when it's clamped to the side of the table. Now, if I clamped it to the back of the table, maybe move my paints a little bit, I could get it right in the center. But I think this is going to be a matter of, if I want to use the magnifier, I'm going to be working on this side of the table um, type of thing. Um, so I really like the color temperatures, being able to dial them in. You know, so I can do just the cool white, I can do just the warm white, but I can also mix and basically mix the color temperature anywhere I want. And these are nice smooth and the mixings, you know, pretty much, you know, any color temperature you want, you can dial in there. Um, you know, realistically, I'll probably just leave them both on all the time. Um, kind of a mixture of the warm white and the cool white, just maximum light. But if you wanted to change that around, you have a lot more control with these knobs. I'm going to look at the magnifying system here, try to paint with it a little bit, and then I'll let you know what I think about the magnifying part. All right, from a motion standpoint, when you put these guys down, the springs keep it where you left it. Um, you lift it in a particular position, it wiggles a little bit, and then it stays. So if you jiggle the table, this thing is going to wiggle a little bit. It's not super solid. Um, and you do have to take this guy and position the head where you want it, and once you get it positioned, you have to tighten this down pretty tightly to keep where it is. Um, but once you do that, you can position it, and it will stay where you've put it. Um, you know, from a standpoint, you know, it feels like cheap metal construction. Um, it has plastic bits and, you know, bolts through them. Um, it doesn't feel like it's super sturdy or super high quality, but then again, compare that to the price point, and, you know, you're, you're getting a pretty decent set of features for the price point. This little lid lifts up to protect the um, lens here from dust, and you know it's a pretty decent magnifying lens, and so I've been using it to paint some things over here, um, and I'm pretty happy with it. The um, one downside I've found with these LEDs is that if you adjust them to less than full brightness, there's a whine. I don't know if you can even hear that in the camera's sensor. It's a high-pitched whine, not super bright. Um, you know, not super loud, 
but it can be annoying. So I typically leave these turned all the way up unless I'm you know, playing with the color temperature to try something out. Just because if you're sitting with your head right next to this thing, you can hear that one. All right, all in all, uh, my review is pretty favorable here. It produces a good amount of light. It's nice you can control the color temperature. Having the magnifier is useful when you need to zoom in on something. Um, I like the, you know, I really like the color temperature control. Um, the arm works fine. It positions it where it needs to be and stays there. You know, it's kind of cheapish metal construction, but it works fine. Um, so all in all, I'm pretty happy with how this light is working out for the uh, painting table here.